hi guys yeah welcome back to my youtube channel once again this is the whistleblower channel and on this channel we discuss everything that has to do with immigration uh, moving from your home country to another country either by studying work or any other type of visa just for you to be able to migrate but today i'll be talking about something that has affected a lot of people irrespective of which country you are from and you have been trying to get to canada and your visa has been rejected times with that number or even once and you're even afraid of applying again so on this video i brought you some good news it's going to be sort of a very short video and a step-by-step -step process on how to rectify certain things so in this video i'll be talking about what is called the gcms note i don't know the full meaning of the gcms but it's sort of like a request to know exactly why your visa was refused the first time the canadian visa whether it is uh, a visitor visa a visiting visa that you applied for or a study permit or a work permit or irrespective of what it is in as much as you were denied the visa then you should apply for the gcms notes. so oftentimes when people apply for visas through um, travel agents and stuff even the agents many agents don't know about things like this they just start speculating, oh, it should be because of this or that. That's why your visa was refused. Then they feel they have to change certain things. Then they reapply again and see they refused. So the Canadian government or the Canadian immigration has made it possible for that to stop. So which means when your visa gets refused, you, you can request the reason why your visa was refused and you have to rectify it. And that is what is called a GCMS note. So on this video, I'll be showing you step by step how you can apply for this GCMS note. Mind you, it's not something that you are going to get very quickly. Um, from their website, it says it takes between five to 30 days, but on average, it takes more than that, probably between five to about 45 or 50 days, let's say about two months for you to get a reply from the Canadian immigration about this. So let's get straight into the video. It's very short step by step step by step process on how you can apply for gcms notes so how did i even know about this so about a year ago i was on this forum on twitter and someone asked the question like well, how exactly do you know the reason why the ircc you know decided to refuse your visa then uh, i think a professor or a doctor somewhere just said you apply for gcms notes that was the first time i came across that so i didn't take it serious then until you know, about three months ago, when people whom I knew personally actually did not get visa as well, like they were denied entry to Canada. So that was when I started checking and checking and trying to see exactly what this GCMS note is. So mind you, the GCMS note is free, you know. Or if you go to many websites or you watch many videos on youtube you are going to see you have to probably pay five dollars or fifteen dollars or twenty dollars somewhere else to fast track the whole stuff and all that's not true you don't go ahead and waste your money gcms note is free and if you are fortunate you get it quickly if not you probably have to wait for about a month or two for you to be able to get it so let's get right into the video all right guys so uh if you want to start or if you want to apply for your GCMS notes, so this is where you're going to go to. You're going to go to Chrome and then on Chrome, you are going to type ETIP. Not necessarily Chrome actually, but any browser you're using is going to bring, once you type in ETIP and click on search, you're going to get this page. So you click on this first link and let's see, this, it takes us directly to the government of Canada website and it says welcome to the ATIP online request to be eligible to make a request under the access to information act ac access to information act or the privacy act you must be a Canadian citizen a permanent resident of Canada or individual occupation currently present in Canada all this you don't you, you don't have to worry about this stuff it doesn't really mean but what you need to do is you come down here and click on next then if you wish to read the privacy notice, you can go ahead and read it. No, I know most, most of us don't actually read stuff like this. So you just need to click on this. I have read, understood, and agree with the above privacy notice. Click on continue. And now you have to fill in the fields. 
So now here, this is where the real work starts. Well, not necessarily something hard, but since we applied for a Canadian visa, there are a lot of services here. There's a CBSA. That is if uh, someone already got to Canada and something happened at the airport. But what we're actually looking for is IRCC, which is Immigration Refugee uh, Citizenship Canada. So when you click on this, you click here that you've agreed, you've read and understood all the steps. Here then you fill in every other necessary thing. So it says to be eligible to make a request, you must... Okay, we've read something like this before. So it says select category that best describes you. Foreign national outside Canada, your surname. So let's say your surname is James. Given first name, let's say Mary. Street number, let's say 32. Street name, um, let's say Lagos Street. I oh, know, don't let us say Lagos Street. Let's say Singh Street. Okay, this is not applicable. Apple suit number doesn't really matter. City. So let's say if somebody who is applying from Nigeria, let's say Lagos. Lagos. Province or state. Lagos. Country. And we'll put Nigeria. So for those who are applying from other parts of the world as well, or anywhere in which you are watching this video. All you just need to do is put in your correct address. The address that you use while you are applying for your visa, postal code, or whatever it is. Telephone number, uh, let's say. Let's just say that is it. Email address. Um, let's use just any email address. Okay, so we use James and Mary. So let's use James Mary. At gmail. Dot com. It's going to ask you to re-enter it. Just copy this and paste. Are you requesting information on your own behalf? Yes, select the category that best describes you. So let's say, let's just you, you can click on anything here actually. At the academia, it doesn't really matter, but just speak member of the public. How do you prefer to receive these records? By email. Click on continue. So it says all fields must be filled. So yeah, the privacy act, that's what we want. In which language do you wish to receive the requested records. So if it's English or French, anyone that you understand best. So let's just speak English. What type of records do you request for? So this is what we are requesting, immigration and citizenship records. So you click on this. Request information for, now the surname we used earlier was James. First name, Mary. So date of birth, let's just pick a random date. Let's say uh, this person was born in the year 2000. Let's say in January of 2001st. So on the letter they will give to you that your visa has been rejected, there's going to be something that is called a UCI number. So you have to enter it. So let's say the UCI number, according to this, is either 8 digits or 10 digits. So let's say we have a 8 digits UCI number, and that's what we want to enter. So all of these are hypothetical, not like it's real. What type of record would you like to request again? It's a temporary residence, yes. Temporary resident. That's what we want. So if it's not temporary resident, if it's permanent resident, spouse or common law partner in Canada class or blah 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 blah, all this kind of stuff. Just read through. Let make sure that it is what you actually applied for. 
that you are actually requesting a type of record. So if it's study permit, it's temporary residence. If it's work permit, it's temporary residence. So that's just it. So let's click on temporary residence. Which specific information are you looking for? Reason. So this is it. Status, update of file, or reasons for refusal. Officer's electronic note. So you click on this. So it's asking for file number. So at this stage, your file number actually is your application number when you applied. So if you are a student, there is going to be an, an application number with S in front of it. If you are a worker, there is going to be an application number W in front of it. If you are a visitor, there is going to be an application number with the letter V in front of it. So let's say this person is a worker. So let's type the file number to be this. W seventy six four eighty ninety seven. So I'm just coming up with all this kind of stuff. Not like you know there is anything really about it. So we can go ahead now and cross check everything that we've done to see that everything is filled. Then now at this stage, you can now decide to send a message to IRCC. For example. Uh, good day. I applied. Excuse me. I applied for Canadian work permit on let's say January. 25th 2024 and I was refused I would like to know the exact reason for the refusal before I apply again so that's just how to go about it. So once you are done with this, you know, just whatever. All these are just uh, formalities. I'm just trying to explain to you what this whole thing is about. So when you are done with this, click on continue. Okay, it says, okay, the format for this is invalid. Okay, I get it. Oh, so I made a mistake there. I added the space. Really? What is wrong? Okay. So I need to add this. Then this. I guess that's it. Nice. So it's going to say that once I'm done with that, it's going to say you should attach a document. So you may submit up to five additional documents. So it has stated specifically do not submit tax record or bank statement. A document containing a social insurance number. Although not mandatory, uploading a copy of your biographical pages of all passports of all applicants who are sitting in the process. So let's say it's a family now, and everybody got rejected. Let's say family of three. The pr primary applicant would upload this passport and the passport of his two other dependents in this place. And once you are done with that, you click on Add. Then it's going to tell you to review and validate. And once you are done with that, that is just to check everything that you have done. Like check if all the information is correct and you click on submit. And after that, within 15 minutes, you are going to get like a message from IRCC that you've been given a particular application number and they are going to tell you when uh, or the duration in which it's possible for you to get the GCMS note. But like I said earlier, it takes between 5 and 30 days. That is what is written on the website, but many times it takes far more than that, especially for those who are applying from outside of Canada. So basically, that is how to apply for the GCMS notes. It is free. You don't have to pay anybody to do this. You can do this yourself in as much as you applied for your visa yourself. So that way, you can know exactly why 
the officer in charge denied your visa. So if it is money, you know, okay, by the time you're applying again, you need to have more money in your phone, in your account. So whatever it is, you just need to explain more, you know, or have additional documents to back up or to be able to tackle the reason why you were denied visa in the first instance. So statistics has shown that the majority of those who actually watch my videos on my channel do not actually subscribe. They just watch and leave. So I'm here by appealing to you guys to please, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and also share to others. So that way, YouTube is going to be able to share my video, or the algorithm rather, will be able to make this video more visible to a lot more people who are actually going to need it. Canada is one of the biggest destinations in the world right now, either for studying or for work or for visiting, whatever it is, that you just name it. So a lot of people will be looking for this video right now so that they can be able to use it if they've been denied visa before. So that's how it is. So please, once again, subscribe, like, and share these videos. Thank you very much. See you on the next one.